John Alzheimer is known as one of our nation's most recognized credit experts. Having worked for 28 years in the credit industry, John has become one of the most prolific speakers about credit and the go-to authority on answers to credit-related questions. Credit Countdown with John Alzheimer. Hey there, this is John Alzheimer. I am a consumer credit expert. I've been in the credit industry for almost 30 years now. I've spent time at FICO, which is the company behind the FICO credit scoring system, and Equifax, which is one of the three generally recognized credit reporting agencies in the United States. And so what, one of the common themes of all my videos, regardless of where you're watching them, there's probably, I don't know, a hundred of them floating around out there at this point. Um, obviously, I spend a whole lot of time talking about consumer credit, credit reports, credit scores, a fair credit reporting act, anything that is either directly or tangentially associated with consumer credit is generally what I'm going to be talking about. Today's no different. I'm going to talk about credit scores and specifically a question that I get from time to time, why don't I have a credit score? And so there's an actual technical answer to that question. So we're going to talk about that today. One of the assumptions I believe that people have is that um, you're born with a credit report and you're born with a credit score. And then as you go through your life and as you start getting into the consumer credit life cycle, which generally occurs in your late teens or early 20s and then lasts for many decades after that, that somehow the credit reporting agencies know that you're born, they know you've been assigned a social security number, and therefore they're going to assign you a credit report. That's not what occurs. Um, you have to actually do something in order for the credit reporting agencies to create a file for you initially. And so generally that happens when you go and apply for credit for the first time. If you, when you go and apply for credit for the first time, the credit reporting agencies will generally create a credit report for you at that point, it's called an inquiry only credit report because there's nothing on it other than the single inquiry uh, by the lender with whom you have applied for the first time. And because you have a limited amount of information on this report, you're not going to initially qualify for a credit score. So you'll notice that I use the word qualify. That was on purpose. You are not assigned a credit score just because you have a credit report. It doesn't work that way your credit report has to actually qualify to be scored. And in credit scoring vernacular, that's referred to as the minimum score requirement. So your credit report has to meet certain criteria in order for it to qualify for a score. And the so the two generally recognized scoring platforms in the United States are FICO and Vantage Score. The minimum scoring criteria for those two scoring platforms is different, all right? Um, in FICO, and so you want to listen up, there's a lot of incorrect information floating around about this. In FI for FICO's credit scoring systems, in order to be scored, and this is under any of their scoring systems, their minimum criteria is the same. Um, you have to have at least one undisputed account, not a collection, an account. One undisputed account that has been uh, open for at least six months. And that's relative to the opening date or the date opened on the account. Number two, you have to have at least one account, undisputed account, that is older than six months or has, excuse me, has been updated within the past six months. And then number three is you, have, you can't have any sort of a deceased indicator on your credit report. So older than six months, updated within six months, not dead. You can have one account satisfy those first two criteria. So if you have a you know, Chase Auto Loan that you opened three years ago that just updated last month and you're not deceased, then you're gonna qualify for a FICO score. Uh, for Vantage Score, the criteria is much more liberal. And for Vantage Score, if you have activity on your credit report within the last 12 months, it's very likely you're gonna qualify for one of their scores. So when you look at the two scoring platforms, uh, more people are gonna have a score under the Vantage Score platform than are gonna have a score under the FICO score platform. Um, and that's important to that's important to keep in mind because uh, you know when when lenders are trying to decide which scoring system they're going to use, that's one of the things they consider, which of these two scoring platforms is going to yield or more scores for me. So if you don't have a score, uh, then your credit reports are failing those two minimum scoring criteria. So you can actually pull your credit report and you can look at all of the accounts on your report. And if none of those accounts are older than six months, 
you're not gonna have a score. If you pull your credit report and none of those accounts have been updated within the past six months, you're not gonna have a score. So it really kind of eliminates the mystery of why do I not have a score, but I have a credit report. Um, so what do I do about it? You know, you definitely, there's, there's nothing glamorous about not having a score. For some reason, people think that it's, you know, oh, it's glamorous to live off the credit grid. And if you listen to any of the loudmouth, um, you know, kind of self-styled financial experts, they always talk about how credit scores reward you for being in debt, which is absolutely incorrect. Um, and this somehow it's fantastic to not have a score. Well, that's great. Right up until you want to go apply for something. And lenders are not going to treat you as favorably if you don't have a score because there's no way for them to assess risk. Uh, you need to have a score. So living off the credit grid is not a good idea, regardless of what you know some person trying to sell you a book is is trying to feed you. Um, so in order to qualify for a score, you're going to have to have some sort of an account. That doesn't mean you're going to have to have debt. It just means you're going to have to have some sort of an account on your credit report that's older than six months. So you can be added as an authorized user on someone else's credit card account. And as long as that account is older than six months and has been updated within the past six months, you're going to meet most more both criteria and your file is going to now be scorable. So that's generally the best way to do it unless you want to go out and open some new account and then wait six months before that account becomes six months old and then boom you're going to qualify for a score. So this generally only happens for people when they're very very young or they have stopped using credit and have let their credit reports kind of go dormant for a while. So I hope that answers your question about minimum scoring criteria. If you have any questions, drop them in the comment section below and I'll do my best to get to them. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day. We'll talk again soon. For more videos and credit tips from John Olsheimer, go to www.tradelinesupply.com.